Hi, it's Joy, and I'm so excited to say that today I'm going to be watching The Witcher Season 3, Episode 6. Everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. Quite the title. I It's been a month, a long month for me. I'm very excited for the show to be back. Um, a little bit of speed that it's going to be the last three episodes of Henry Cavill, but I talked about that in my beginning of reaction to this. Um, I love this show. I love Siri and Yennefer and Yaskia and the rest of the world as well. So I'm just so ready to see what these final three episodes of Season 3 have in store for us. And I am still excited for Season 4, even though there's a little apprehension attached to that. I, the, the last the half of season one, well it's not really a half is it, but you know, volume one ended quite, you know, ooh, tell me more please, so now I'm ready for the rest. Let's remind her that you can find the unedited version of this reaction on my Patreon two weeks in advance, the unedited version one week in advance, and let's go. A new day dawns, Geralt Yeah. So the Redanians weren't coming here to try and stop whoever was, I mean, I, I the, um, the, 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 or whatever the, the, they were here to do their own thing but there aren't going to be redanian reinforcements arriving because the reinforcement dude got an arrow through the neck like siri saw it, are the elves coming too what else is happening and i am still concerned that zaskia's yes yeah, zaskia my jesus christ yaskia's boyfriend potential boyfriend is in on this and it's distracting him because he knows Ciri's in the house or it's just distracting him because he knows he's with Geralt or they've got him alone somewhere I want to believe that it's an adorable love story and like as much as I've tried to avoid any behind the scenes stuff like in the in between of these seasons I have seen like the official Witcher like net and um, Twitter or whatever tweeting things about like how cute they are and I'm like does that mean they're really just like I can just think they're cute or I was just I don't trust She's on their side. Please don't say you were distracting him. Please say you're genuine. Please be genuine, Mr. Prince. Yeah, was he distracting him this whole time? I was just. I know what you were doing, Ravala. Yes, you've got it wrong. Oh, I've got it wrong. I'm sorry. Which part? The part where okay. you. First of all, I'm glad. I'm glad. I, mean, I didn't think Yaskia would be fooled. And I also do think Radovir potentially does genuinely like him, just there's a lot of other shit going on and I'm glad Yaskir is like, I know. Feigned affection for me, or the part where you tried to kidnap a young woman under my care whilst I slept. Mm -hmm. I'll be out from under the extra's thumb. And there it is. How can you think my feelings for you are alive? Because that is who you are. Because you just literally took him outside, distracted him with your feelings, and then went to try and kidnap a young woman under his care. Like, I, I do personally think his feelings aren't a lie. But what do you think he's going to think? Your call. Is she with Yennefer or is she hiding? But yeah, Yasuke, you, you did have one job. My girl in the woods again. Do you like that she was in a hurry, but she still braided her hair? Just Vilgefortz and his cronies. The rest shall bear witness. Oh, okay, so those are the traitors. On all of us. I mean, Redanius. I love this because Geralt is kind of just taking his time. He's not doing anything rash. He is assessing this situation. He is figuring out what's going on, where, like, what he needs to do and what he can let happen. Yennefer is off to try and find Siri. I love this. Too. I mean, Vilgefortz being captured is not the end of the world. Great word choice. My master has given me power beyond power. Beyond power. You've mastered the art of being a creepy bitch. Jennifer, Jennifer come on. Fight all you want. Yes, Triss! I knew Jennifer wouldn't be the only mage to escape, and I'm so thankful it was Triss. With us, Siri will find and fulfill her own destiny. Her destiny is with Vilgefortz. Oh, fuck off. Nothing. Rip. Oh, I'm so okay. Brilliant. Now you need to find Siri. We have accounts of portals bridging this place and Nilfgaard. Mm -hmm. Vilgefortz's portals. Why well, she's the only one? And Yennefer's not here to try and Listen, tell her the truth we as well. And what of you, Witcher? What is your stake? <laughs> Geralt's like, I'm, I'm just, no. Nor do I think the accusation's insane. Mm hmm. I didn't know this was coming. Lippert and Dijkstra are who should be on trial here. 
<laughs> Carol. Shit about brotherhood. There's an unnatural fog in the bay. What do you mean? Oh mean? God. So using magic to conceal. It's a Redanian army. It's the elves. Their treachery. Because the reinforcement dude had an arrow through his neck. Nilfgaard? It was Nilfgaard or it's the elves? Death to Redania. Yeah. I'll just tell you where we've taken her. This man thinks he's gonna challenge Geralt. You can't blame a man for trying. I mean, you can. If you had some kind of a magic trick against him, there is like the tiniest slither of a chance. If you're gonna fight him. Best hope one of them's a barber surgeon. <laughs> should have known better, friend. No, you should have paid more attention, friend. To say uh, they aren't wrong about Vilgefort, their methods yeah. wrong. You weren't wrong, but how you went about it was. Oh. That won't be happening. Neil's got here, right? The Scoia tail will enter this place. And burn it to the ground in the name of the white flame. Of course, Nilfgaard and the elves are the fucking same thing. I am in Moron. What are you talking? All to say, uh... I have my own aims. And they you go used her this whole you. time. I'm sorry to say, uh... And you, with your undying trust, were easy to fall. We're going to destroy this man. Don't worry to say, uh... I'm very sorry to say uh, You can rebuild. Anything they do can be rebuilt. Even if it has to look different. Today we reclaim Maratusa as our own. I mean, it did used to be an elvish place. I love that Kahir is standing next to Francesca and he's like, You're working for the guy that killed your baby, but you don't know. Baby murderer. Yep. Yeah. They will fight. Not much of a shield, just saying that, right? Oh, well, that's why I let him off. <laughs> that's why she was running alone. Yeah, if you were dead, you would leave her. Oh. And she's had dreams that come true before, so she and obviously hearing sounds of battle in the distance, she would think, given everything she's been through as well, given her whole family were killed previously. Get away from this island as fast as possible. Geralt will find you. Come on. Honestly, get Francesca. <laughs> well, Francesca, maybe start to consider. Oh, don't you dare fucking shoot to say it. If this battle is winning you anything, or if it is simply costing you more and more and more and more and more. Lost your brother. Lost him. Because of decisions you made. You baby mass murderer. If she hadn't mass murdered babies, I would so be like, I feel really bad for you, but she just mass murdered babies. <sighs> I love this as well because, um, thingamajig, friend, Fringilla's uncle, whose name I cannot remember, um, because I have brain fog and it makes names hard to remember. Like, he and Desaia do not get on. They clash at almost every council meeting of the mages. But when it comes down to it, the mages have pulled together and I love it. Oh, whoa. Whoa, she even killed her own uncle. Angela, are you seriously, after your time in the tavern, rejoined Nilfgaard? I mean, like, I'm not saying she should come back and be like, hey, Aratuza, you're the best, I love you. You rejoin Nilfgaard, Jesus. Is this what you want for your people? Fuck. Francesca is so, like, she has lost. Like, she was going to kill every single person in that room. 
including herself, if Fringilla hadn't done that. And then freaking Fringilla, Nilfgaard, literally tossed her away, treated her like she was nothing anyway, used her, took advantage of her, like, vulnerability after she was imprisoned and everything, used her, discarded her when she was no longer useful, were willing to kill her in that dungeon of poison tasting, like, drink until you're dead, essentially, and then now she's like, oh yeah, I had one night of freedom in a tavern, now I'm going to rejoin Nilfgaard. Or, I suppose alternatively, I will give her one tiny little thing. Is she just here for Francesca because they did form a bond last season? They, just, they, they did form a very genuine bond last season, despite the, the two women in power trying to look out for each other um, that kind of went beyond what they were doing, but then they did also both put their um, personal pol political ideas ahead of each other as well. So maybe she's just here looking out for Francesca and thinks, fuck Nilfgaard. But, but I also don't think that's how it works right now. We're almost at the stables. Ugh, shit, of course it was this bitch. You go, Siri. Come on, Yennefer. <laughs> Goodbye, firefucker. My family. Searching for you, Siri. That was absolutely everything. Them both coming together to protect their daughter, just the way they instinctively work together, trust each other. He found them just like we knew he would. I was so worried it was gonna take him a bit longer to find them, and I should not have doubted Geralt's minding abilities. I too thought I'd lost everything, but there is always something to fight for. This is yep, she's fight. just here for Francesca. She's watching everything she's worked so hard to protect fall apart because she trusted somebody. It's not your fault, to say it. Punish us tomorrow. They will not destroy this place to say. I mean, they weren't wrong in wanting to stop Wilgerfort. Just how they came about it was so stupid. We'll keep on fighting. Fucking hell. Sarah is just lost right now because she's blaming herself. So you don't do anything rash to say it. It's not your fault. Trusting is never wrong. And he, as far as you could see, he gave you only reasons to trust. The reasons to distrust him all happen out of your knowledge. Survive to fight another day. Is she going to sacrifice herself? A spell of last resort. Go to her. We'll be all right. No. She has no choice. I understand what she means to you. Oh, I love them so much. She suffers. I love how much they trust so long. and love each other. And it was all worth it. I love them. No matter where you go, where you hide, we will never be apart. I know. Never lost. Always found. I love you, my daughter. <laughs> Come back to us. She will. I love them so much. It is amazing what you can do when you think for yourself. You've ended up directly where you were before, Fringilla. Like, okay, yeah, you're not, I guess, technically working for Nilfgaard. You're working for Francesca. Have you told Francesca that Nilfgaard killed her baby because you know that Nilfgaard killed her baby? You know it was Amir because he told you very proudly and then locked you up for pretending that it was you. Have you told this to Francesca? Is she now targeting literally everybody? Oh my god. Mistred. Google Force is here somewhere. But it's not the only thing I want. I'll see you soon. He wanted Istrid as well, right? So did he just send Istrid through to his weird portal place that he loves? Is it Kahir? Yep. It's him. The man with the winged helmet. Without his winged helmet. There's no coming back from this. Back to what? 
To my home he burned. I'm not afraid of him anymore. I know, my baby. I'm so proud of you, Siri, and I'm so stressed right now. Fucking. We do have an advantage in this fight in that he is ordered to not kill her, which is handy. He took everything from her. Now I can't stop asking questions. Ooh. I was wrong. I can't give you back the life I stole. Oh my goodness. Also, he could tell her about dad. Fuck. You took everything from me. I know. Take his place. Fucking hell. Siri. And forgive me. Forgive me. Let's go, you tell. Go. I will find you. I mean, like, sir, is that a threat? Or is that a promise? Because, like, I think mean, she's made it pretty clear she doesn't want to see you unless you mean, he means I will find you and let you kill me later. But also, I don't think Siri would actually just want Siri. to execute someone. Kaseya. Let's end this. Also, Francesca, you do realize now if you kill Kaseya, she essentially killed herself first. It's oddly a victory. One last stand. Stand back or die. You will not take what is ours. You fucking mongrel. Oh my god. I... What? <laughs> Who let the racist out of his cell? I mean, at this point, oh, he's using freaking fire magic. And is he also invisible from this angle? But, like, I suppose, you know, use the racist to your advantage when you can. <laughs> He'll be of use if he dies for this, I suppose. He'll die fucking happy because he hates elves because he's a racist. He's tapping into fire magic. Go. Oh, now you trust Jennifer. I've been waiting for this moment. You weird racist no. man. At least your death will be useful. I'm not leaving you. I can help you. Never lost, always found. Oh. Go. Never lost, always found. It's so true in their whole lives as well as in these individual moments. And who is he facing? What is he facing? Gilgafor? So, we have an epilogue then that draws the play to a close. This man is so full of himself. Fate? You lack originality. Even more so with a mere pulling your strings. Mm -hmm. I have no strings. Nilfgaard will get what it wants, as will I. You may consider you who is the enemy of good today, Geralt. Sure. I'm tired of I will not join your fight. Arrogance will be your undoing. Look in the mirror, mate. And steel will be yours. Good line. Remember when we were skating on a lake? That was nice. Knowing I could take any life at any time. Yeah, you that's why you so casually and merrily murdered a person who was already injured and out of the fight. We you know. I feel like given the point we're at of the season, Geralt could lose this fight, like obviously not die. And I don't think we're gonna kill Bill before right now. Though if we do, I, I'm okay with it. So it's going great for everyone involved. Apart from me, I'm having a terrible time. And if I say everyone else is having a great time, I'm just rambling. I'm sorry, I'll shut up. Fuck. Geralt. Geralt! <laughs> Could smash your brain out. Make a friend of this pain, Geralt of Rivia. Today. Oh fucking hell. 
as my warning to the continent. Oh my god. This was supposed to be a lesson. Oh my god. Oh my god. We're getting through this, Geralt, okay? Never lost, always found. I knew he would inevitably lose this fight, I just didn't think it would be like this. I don't even know what like this is right now. What the fuck is that a monolith? Please don't scream, Siri, my love. How has this been one episode? I didn't know. This is so scary. Oh my god. I understand. What are you doing? What is she doing? You don't know what you're playing with, Cirilla. You are not ready for this kind of power. I mean I kind of agree with him right now because I don't know what you're doing. We can change this content. Siri, what have you just done? I love you, I love you, and I will always love you, but what have you just done, my darling? Geralt. Like, is he paralyzed? He'll be healed. He has to be healed. Is he gonna go through like a cocoon and that's why he's gonna look different? Oh, that slaughter and for what, bitch? He used to say is alive. Siri, are you okay, sweetheart? What happened? I would like to say Netflix really missed the trick in if that had been the end of volume one. I know volume two would have only been two episodes, but it was only two episodes of Stranger Things. If that had been where they'd left us for a month, I would have been personally pitchforking my way to Netflix town. Um, holy shit. This episode was beyond insane. It felt like three episodes in one. How on earth have I only been recording for 51 minutes? Like that felt like it was an hour and a half at least. So much happened i suppose it was because the battle kind of there was no build up it just boom happened um so huge questions right now and number one being what what did siri do again i support her i support her rights and her wrongs um i don't think this would have been a wrong so much as a not understanding but also a desperation because you know she's alone the creepy man's coming she doesn't know what's happened to anybody else the fact that he's here means he's got boss Geralt. like things aren't good um and the rock was the monolith if that was a monolith was communicating with her what has she done and did she just cause a blast that like knocked vilgefort away and like saved herself what happened i don't know and i'm stressed um worst case scenario for siri next episode would be for her to like wake up or something and just be with vilgefort um best case scenario would be she's on the run finds tris and Geralt, and they get him some help um middle ground scenarios could be any mil millions of things what Ah, uh, the end. I love every moment of the fighting with Geralt. Every time Yennefer, Yennefer Geralt, Siri were together in any of those combinations, they were beyond perfect. Or never lost, always found. My heart. Um, the fight between Geralt and Vilgefort was absolutely terrifying. It was particularly terrifying because I just felt like, from a storytelling point of view, Geralt was going to lose this fight. I didn't think he would die, but I didn't you know, I didn't think it was going to be pretty, and, and it really wasn't pretty, and I was just hoping it would be like a little tap on the head and he went to sleep, not like brutally injured, seemingly paralysed, at the very least, you know, very, very, very severely hurt. Now, this is a world of magic and whatnot, so I have to believe Geralt will heal. A part of me is wondering, is he going to enter like a chrysalis of healing and emerge with a different face? Um, but like, that was beyond brutal and in that moment as well for him to know that not only has he been bested in this fight by an enemy that he didn't see coming in time but that, that enemy is now going after Siri and that he cannot do anything to go and protect Siri. you know he is somebody as we saw who will fight till his last breath he will limp he will drag himself to that fight to protect what he believes in and he cannot do that right now um then the mages who fought very valiantly for Aratusa, a oh, bloody racist bitch coming back and blasting some elves he'll die happy i suppose um really like just absolutely chilling scenes this episode was so well done and i think it's also going to be very very jarring when you binge the series because you're going to go from like the mixed up timelines and the like all is not bum bum as it seems like party kind of fun mystery episode to blood and slaughter um, I was really convinced there that to say I was going to 
die. I don't necessarily think she's long for this world, though I suppose if she's just aged her body, she'd already live for a good few hundred years, but you know, she can just be a, she'll just be an old mage for a little while. I, I, I don't know. I really thought like Yennefer wasn't gonna make it there in time and was gonna find her dead, or at the very least was gonna find her and like have her like be like, yeah, never, and then die. So the fact that she's alive, deeply traumatized, sure, but alive is a plus. Um Okay, so I'm trying, like, I don't even know what to do with this episode. Like, so freaking much happened. I'm definitely not going to talk about everything when I want to talk about everything. At the beginning, um, so obviously with the initial things, I loved the way Geralt was just like, if I fight, I potentially could get away with this, but I'm also not going to get any information on what's actually happening if I start fighting, so I'm just going to go with them. But he was fully prepared that at any moment, if need be, he would start fighting. And then when he arrived, and they were like, we put Vilgefortz on trial, and he was like, yeah, all right. I know he's the bad guy. I'll just sit here, I suppose, see how this pans out. I'll intervene if I need to. Then, of course, Nilfgaard and the Square Tail arrived, and things got pretty bad. Um... But I loved the way you could kind of just see the gears in Geralt's brain just ticking over as he just took in what was happening. The way Yennefer immediately could see that Geralt's been incapacitated, Geralt's doing whatever Geralt needs to do, I need to get to Ciri. And she got there all right. Um, and then the way Geralt also, like, you know, he'll find us, he'll always find you. And then, like, he did absolutely everything. Um, I am sorry for Yaskia because as much as I do think the prince does like him, and maybe does have real feelings for him he also definitely came to him on this occasion to get him out of the way so that he could go after Siri. at the end of the day i think if Siri had been in bed and yaskia had been there and anybody had come into the room i love yaskia but i do think Siri would be the biggest threat to deal with of the two the only real use in getting yaskia away would be that there's not someone whacking a loot over your head i don't know i love him don't get me wrong yaskia is everything he is my love, I love him, but in a fight, I would want Siri on my side a thousand times before I'd want Yaskia. Um, but definitely the fact that he even knew that the spell would be till dawn, and so he kind of distracted Yaskia till dawn, and then we're going in there with every intention of grabbing Siri. Now, again, the plan, if there was a plan of just sending the prince alone to get Siri, I suppose as far as they know. Redania don't necessarily know about the magical parts of Ciri, right? They just know that she's a lost princess, who if they get her, then they can use her to claim Sintra. I don't think from Hastikstra and people, have they ever talked about her as like the Elder Blood princess or anything? Or do they just think of her as like a political pawn? Um, because I suppose if you think she's just a stereotypical princess, like, you know, episode one Ciri probably would not have been able to escape I can't remember his name, the prince, especially if there were soldiers nearby, like, episode one Ciri would have been taken. Um, she would have put up a hell of a fight and she could have, well, surprised him, but she would have ended up, um, she would not have been able to, she's learned so much from Geralt and her, Yennefer about who she is, about how to fight and about magic. The reality is, if he had gone in there and Ciri had been asleep and had not woken up from her nightmare, she would have been able to best that prince easily. Um, but for Yaskir in that moment, he really thought he had a connection, and then I think there was always that part of him worrying about it. And it was what well, I was worrying about it too. Because it's been so frustrating. Because I want... Gaskia deserves love. And he deserves a magical romantic love. Like he's watched Geralt and Yennefer have. And then... There is all this weird betrayal around it. Um, where is Gaskia? Like is he just hanging out at the cabin in case the others come back? Has he gone off in search himself? Like we know he ran out of the thing yelling Ciri's name. Um, very interesting in a way that Ciri didn't go back to him i suppose she'd had that nightmare the dream in which Geralt and yennefer died um now that probably was a little bit of her gift kind of warning her but i think it's probably a nightmare she's had before but woken up and they've been asleep nearby you know they, they, they haven't been dead um but when you wake up and there is sounds of a place being sacked of a battle going on which would immediately bring back the trauma of the fall of sintra and losing her family there you've just dreamt that they've died you know in the past you've dreamt things that have come true she truly that's why she grabbed her stuff and ran for the hills was because she truly in that moment was afraid and believed that she was alone in this world again and it breaks my heart that she went through that and that she's probably going through that right now i suppose she'll know vilgefort got past Geralt to get to her she doesn't know what state Geralt is in if he's alive or dead Yennefer she knows went to say it and yeah that battle didn't go great but like she can hopefully hope no matter what Yennefer will find her again um 
but yeah the whole ugh, everything about this episode and Siri knowing you never had to go back to to say it she knows what it's like to see your home fall she knows what it's like to lose people that you love family that you loved and you know Yennefer right there and then her place was with them now I think truly Yennefer's place was in both places the ideal situation would have been to split her down the middle and have both but Yennefer could not let to say it kill herself and not be there to try and help and support her and not be there to fight for her home against the people that are after Siri as well if the elves get the nice you know we don't want Nilfgaard and the elves to have Arthusa um what did, would it have made a big difference had Yennefer been there maybe if she'd been with Siri all the way to the end she may well have been able to say that don't listen to that stone or do do what it says or she would have known more about what was happening I suppose and maybe she'd have stayed and helped Geralt as well um Fringilla is fascinating initially I was so mad at her because I was like you rejoined Nilfgaard and then slowly I was like wait no she does have a very deep connection with Francesca if she has rejoined Francesca that makes sense to me because they did form a huge bond but the reality of the situation is that Francesca lost her child and went insane and Fringilla knows it not only personally attempted to claim responsibility falsely but knows who did it and knows that the person who did it is the person that Francesca is currently aligned with she murdered hundreds of innocent babies i mean it would have been innocent even if they were the babies of the but you know there wasn't even a vague i mean not there's ever justification for murdering the babies had she been murdering the babies of the people who had genuinely killed her baby i still would hate her for it but like it was not even the right place she targeted it on um and Fran frangilla knows this so i think in order for their partnership to truly be just two women looking out for each other they form this bond her being like i believe in you francesca and i want to follow you she's gonna need to tell her that it was amir who killed her child um and then that's gonna create quite an interesting twist if francesca ever realizes siri is amir's daughter because obviously um Francesca believes in Siri, believes because of a prophecy that Siri is going to save the elves, destroy all humans and save the elves, or whatever she believes. Like, she wants Siri for that. But then she also was quite into murdering the babies of the people that murdered her baby. So, will she then want to kill Siri? Like, she's going to be quite. And given that she is losing every single thing that she ma that matters to her, yeah, I don't think she's going to be getting more stable. Um, so, I'm very intrigued to see how her dynamic with Fringilla goes from here. Is Fringilla going to realise she's gone from one unstable, power hungry person to another? Because as much as the elves have a valid cause and what behind what they're doing, Francesca has truly lost the plot in lots of ways. Um, and lost everything she cares for other than Frangilla right now. And we need to see if she actually cares about Frangilla and the rest of the elves at all. Kahir, another fascinating figure in this episode. The way he seemingly was working with Nilfgaard and seemingly was working with um, the elves. And then obviously... <sighs> He killed his mate. He killed Robbie Amell. Galandi? I can't remember his name. He died quite quickly. He killed Robbie Amell for Amir to prove his loyalty. Now, did he do that for his own sake? So he would get promoted again? So that he would have better access to Ciri? Um, I, because the fact that he not only didn't fight her, but then was like, I thought I was doing the right thing. I don't know what to believe anymore. I don't think I... Basically, he said, I did the wrong thing when I destroyed Cintra and killed everyone you love I'm sorry about that somebody who believed in what Amir was doing would not say that he would say Siri it is the right thing to do your father is waiting for you go to him he wants you because I do think when Siri finds out it's her father she's going to be fucking horrified but there will be a part of her that would almost think well I want to know what he has to say for himself like I again I don't think she'll be like well I want to go and play happy families but I do feel like she would that would mess her up a bit more that would make her throw her off balance and if you were trying to get a hold of her that is a good thing to do but he didn't throw that card he just apologized asked for her forgiveness and offered her his throat so and then fought off the elves who were working with Nilfgaard but also for the elves where is Kahir's head at right now and to be honest I don't entirely know if Kahir knows there's a part of me that almost thinks Kahir saw Siri and then was like I everything I've ever done is wrong um <laughs> I think he has had these doubts for some time about Amir um but then realizing that you have so much blood on your hands for the wrong cause, for a cause that is not just, would fuck with your head. And the fact that he promised, like he said to Siri, I'll find you, <laughs> is really frightening. Um, and I, I, I feel like at this point he might mean it is, and I'll find you and help you. I don't know. 
very intriguing and we know that he dispatched the Squirtel scout that were coming after Siri and has since vanished he could also have been whoever found Siri I do there is still a chance that he is working with Amir still is loyal to Amir just knows that the elves aren't quite I don't know where his head's at I feel like potentially if he came face to face with Amir he might crumble again I really just I'm so intrigued with where Kahir's head is at but that moment when Siri saw him this man that has haunted her nightmares for destroyed her life led the army that destroyed her life and the way Geralt was like well if you kill him there is no coming back from that because Siri has not intentionally killed anyone she's killed monsters and things but she has not taken a human life and it will change it does change you whether it's an execution whether it's justified whatever you think about it it will change you but in that moment she wanted to do it and I love that Geralt was like you can't go back from this but he also stood back and was like I support Siri if this is what she's gonna do she's gonna do it um, I think had Kahir tried to kill her, he would have stepped in. I also, you know, we knew he wouldn't, which is nice. Um, God, so much happened in this fucking episode. Like, I already know I've missed things. So Vilgefortz wanted Ciri, obviously, and he wanted the book. And then he sent the book and Istrid through one of his evil portals. So Istrid is now just chilling with the book on that landing place, beach place, right? Um, so freaking much. Oh, I'm trying to unscramble my brain to see if there are any huge moments that I haven't talked about. Or to say her in general, I my heart is broken for her and I knew it, it would be the moment she ever got close to Vilgefortz after we knew he was evil. The whole of season two, I almost felt like they were gaslighting us alongside to say her because I was like, he just killed a person on his side in season one. Why are we not talking about this? Why are we doing this? And I'm pretty sure they said after season two that there had been a couple of scenes that they had filmed that were going to be teasing Vilgefortz not being a good guy, but then they didn't put them in in the end. And um, yeah, um, we, we've been waiting for this to come, but the moment when Taseya realised that she had been fooled, and it wasn't even a case of, I do love you, but I'm putting my cause ahead of you. It was literally like, I used you and I don't need to use you anymore. You were stupid and I, you bailed. I don't think it's as simple as that. I think, as far as she could see, Vilgefortz had only done things that were helpful. She helped fight Nilfgaard. Not as well as he could have done, but as far as they were concerned, he helped fight Nilfgaard. It's kind of interesting when you think about it, actually, that I'm pretty sure in the first battle he did attack Kahir. But then neither of them killed each other, so I suppose that was all part of it. Um, you know, he stood up for her at every single council meeting. He has argued with her. Like, you can only trust with the information you know, and it is not a weakness to love someone and to trust them. It's not like people have been coming to Taseya and saying... I'm concerned about Vilgefort and she's been saying go away you know if we'd had if Yennefer had come to her like a week ago and said we think Vilgefort is with Nilfgaard and Taseya had dismissed her had said I'm not even gonna listen to you then you would think oh you kind of fucked up because you need to at least consider but there was no reason for her no one had got to her in time to ask that and so it does break my heart um very stressed with where it's all going next. And I'm so sorry. I'm almost certain uh, I've missed a point that I wanted to talk about. I do obviously react and talk about things in the middle. So hopefully anything that was major I have already covered. But I am so... Oh, this episode was fantastic and it was terrible. And I, I kind of don't want to watch the next episode. Okay? I feel like I was just punched in the face. A reminder that you can find the unedited version of this reaction on my Patreon two weeks in advance. The edited version one week in advance. Thank you so much for watching.